Good morning, Life Church. My name's John. I'm married to Lois. We've got three children, Ezekiel, Seth, and Serenity. We're based at the West End site of Life Church, and it's it's a pleasure just to be sharing with you today a little bit about what God's been speaking to me about through lockdown and just some of our experience as well. Um, like many people around the country, we've got two working parents at home and three primary school age children and that has meant a lot of juggling, a lot of, a lot of things getting rearranged, uh, kind of daily structures gone out the window and to be honest a day looks quite like one of us getting up fairly early starting work, the other getting up fairly early and, and looking after the kids, trying to homeschool them, trying to keep, um, keep the family sane, trying to keep the peace, trying to um, encourage them to play together, to have fun. And then about lunchtime, whoever started work early comes down, we, um, we do a quick high five, hand over, and then we swap round and the other one of us is, is up in our spare room working and um, then the other looks after the kids as well for the afternoon. And then we, we come to the evening, we try and have dinner together. And by the time we've done, done that, got packed away, tidied up, um, got the kids in bed, it, <laughs> to be honest, we're fairly exhausted and, and um, we, we kind of go to sleep and then next day repeat. And it's been, there's been things that have been really tough during this time for us. And I suspect that there are things that have been tough for people around the country, people in church, and for some of us here in Life Church as well. And one of those things that have been tough has been um, just finding time to spend with Jesus, finding time to spend with God, and then um, just connecting with him when we're out of routine as well. Um, and I want to share a little bit about something that God spoke to me through a passage in, um, in Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians a few days ago. It, I've been reading through these letters and... I always ask the Holy Spirit to kind of reveal anything he wants to reveal to me when I, when I read the Bible. And this, this one time, reading this, this section, I, just, I couldn't really move on from a little part of the, um, of the passage. It, it came back to me time and time again. I, I went to work that day and with their kids. It was just coming back into my mind. And I, I had to kind of dwell on it a bit more and ask, ask God, kind of, what do you want to say? through this, this passage. And I'd just like to share with you just for a few minutes what, what God was kind of talking to me about, because I think it's, it's probably relevant for a lot of people as well. The, the passage itself is from 2 Thessalonians, chapter one, verses one to 12, and, and it reads, to this end, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power, so that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And the bit of that which, which stuck with me, which the Holy Spirit kind of just kept bringing back to my mind, was this bit about Jesus being glorified. Paul's, Paul's writing a letter to the, to the Thessalonians who have been going through some, some difficult times. They've been um, wondering about uh, the second coming. They've also been wondering whether Paul's letters are, are authentic or not. And I was struck by the fact that this part of Paul's prayer, part of his letter and his prayer for the church in Thessalonia, was, was not directly related to anything um, that the that the church had asked him about, but was directly related to Jesus being glorified, both um, in the church and in him as well, in Jesus. You in him, it says. Uh, and this got me thinking about, about the way I pray. And I realised that so often I, I pray and I come to God and I, I'm quite directive in my prayers, particularly if I pray for people, if I pray for situations. And... Reflecting on this, I realise that, that it's, it's myself that gets in the way of God. I don't, I, and I haven't really previously prayed, God just be glorified in this situation. It, it almost feels a bit too easy. It almost feels a bit like a cheap prayer. You, you know, just asking God to come and be glorified. It almost seems to take away some of the, the hard work we do in praying, in saying more words, in, 
in putting more thoughts into there. But the more I've dwelt on it, the more I realised that it's, it's quite a hard prayer to pray in some respects because it takes the, the kind of you element, the I element out of it. And I realised that the way I pray often is, is by kind of putting my answers into the prayer and asking God for them, asking God for certain things in a situation, asking God for for this thing or that thing, or asking for just for, for what I want to happen or what I feel is right to happen in a situation. And this, this prayer of Jesus be glorified really, really struck me as something quite simple, but something that we can all do and something that actually takes away the kind of I part and, and brings in a real reliance on Jesus because it means we, we're praying, we don't really know what Jesus' will might be in some situations, but we're, we're saying, Jesus, have your way. Jesus, come and be glorified. Jesus, be lifted high in this situation. And it's, it's changed the way I pray. It's changed the way I pray for myself at the beginning of the day. I say, Jesus, be glorified in my life today. It's changed the way I pray for my family in terms of, of, of just praying for Lois and the kids. I, it's quite simple, but I just pray be glorified in their lives today. Be glorified in what we do in our home today. Be glorified in our work today. And then when we look at the world around us, sometimes it's, it's really hard to know what to pray and what's the right thing, what's the right outcome, what is the outcome that God would want in a situation. But actually, it's been, it's been quite releasing for me to pray, Jesus, just be glorified in this situation, be glorified where there's in, in hospital, in the governments, be glorified in situations where there's discrimination, be glorified in, in, in people rioting, be glorified in these situations. And it's really brought me to a deeper point of prayer just by just by praying something shorter and something more simple it's it's brought me to a place of putting god first in my prayer life it's brought me to a place of of kind of seeking his will rather than my will it's brought me to a place of of letting go a bit and i, I just i just hope through what i'm sharing today with you guys that this is something that that will challenge you and, and help you as well in your prayer life um we're going to be talking about prayer a lot more over the next few weeks and months here at Life Church. It's something that God is calling us to do more of, to go deeper into him, to really push into prayer. And I'm looking forward to that. As I finish, my prayer for you today is that God will be glorified in your life. Thank you.